Hey friends and welcome back to the channel. Today I have brought you inside my home to show you how I pressure can rabbit. So in honor of the release of my cookbook Home Cooked Rabbit which I have done in conjunction with a bunch of my favorite other rabbiteers, rabbit raisers, cuniculturists, whatever you want to call us. We all raise rabbits for meat and we have created some fantastic recipes for you. So one of those things that I cover in Home Cooked Rabbit, my cookbook, is how to pressure can rabbit. Pressure can rabbit is one of our favorite things to put up on the shelf. Now, and today I'm going to show you one way that I go about pressure canning rabbit meat. So one reason that I absolutely love pressure canned rabbit meat is because it allows you to make your rabbit meat shelf stable. Now when we go about pressure canning rabbit, I usually reserve this for our older rabbits like old breeders who I'm worried about the meat being tough because no pressure canned meat is ever tough. It's, it's always nice and fall apart tender. And I also use this method for any rabbits that are on the smaller side. So if we had grow outs that didn't grow very large and they don't have big, beautiful hindquarters that will make a nice sized dinner, there's no reason in me putting that in my freezer. Instead, I save the freezer space and I pressure can that meat. Now the method that I am doing today is called hot packing. So in this method, I have pre-cooked my rabbit meat. I actually cooked this a few nights ago and I've let it chill out in my fridge. Now I'm going about shredding all of this meat up. I will then place all of this meat into quart jars and top it with some broth to help meat up the head space and kind of keep it moist throughout the pressure canning process. And then I will can it and I will show you how to do that here in a little bit. I am leaving this rabbit meat in decent sized chunks. That way if I want big chunks in my soups and stews I have it. If I want smaller chunks I can just break it up then. This is the belly flap portion. Um, it gets a kind of weird texture when you cook it. So the only thing we use it for is belly flap jerky. And that's of course in the cookbook. And it does really well for that. But for everything else, we just give it to the chickens. Another way that you can go about pressure canning rabbit meat is to cold pack rabbit meat. And you can do this bone in or bone out. I've done it both ways. If you choose to leave the bone in in your rabbit meat when you're canning it, be extra careful to take out all of the small bones when you take the rabbit out of the jars all right well there we go this is like a 9 by 13 cookie sheet that's like i don't know an inch deep and this thing is like tall uh probably four inches tall up top so it's a good amount of rabbit meat come from seven small rabbits now we're gonna get it canned up While my pressure canner heats up outside and my broth heats up on the stove, I am going to start filling my jars with the shredded rabbit. So with rabbit, you want to go to one and a fourth inch head space. And that is with both the meat and the broth. We eat a lot of meat in our diet because I am very much on a carnivore based diet. Like I'm 80% meat, dairy, cheese, eggs type deal and then the rest, the other 20% I will make up with, you know, a little bit of fruits, a little bit of vegetables, some things like that. So we eat a lot of meat. If your family does not eat a lot of meat, you may want to can these in pint sizes instead of quart sizes depending on what you're going to do with them. So far I have ended up with five quarts of shredded rabbit meat. I will top these with the broth. Before I put the broth in here, I will be putting a small pinch of kosher salt. You can also use canning salt into each one. You can use something like a Redmond's Real Salt that has all the minerals in it. Just know that it will discolor your broth a little bit so it won't be as clear. It will be a little bit more murky. That's completely safe. It just makes a little bit of change in how it looks. It is very important that you use hot broth for this process because you do not want to use cold rabbit and cold broth and then go put your jars in a hot canner. That can cause your jars to break and explode within your canner. After putting the liquid in your jars, you want to use some kind of poking tool, a chop, wooden chopstick, or something like that to be able to bust the bubbles, any air bubbles that are trapped in the liquid, to get them out because otherwise you will not have the correct ratio of liquid inside of your jars 
and your seals may fail. So go ahead and poke them down. Make sure you get all of those bubbles out and then add more liquid if needed. Now in my cookbook, Home Cooked Rabbit, I do have a little grid table that will tell you exactly how long you need to pressure can your rabbit, whether it's hot packed, cold packed, depending on what type of pressure gauge you're using, whether it's a jiggler or actually one of the dial gauges and what elevation you're at. So higher elevations need a pressure can for a different time than us lower elevation. So all of that is in Home Cooked Rabbit when I talk about preserving rabbit meat. That book has over 30 different recipes in it that are like tried and true recipes. I ask people that I know what are your favorite rabbit recipes that you cook at home and those are the recipes that made it into the book because I wanted to give y'all recipes that I knew people loved and I wanted to give them to you from different backgrounds and all across the United States. So I chose different rabbitry friends who live all over over the United States and ask them what their take is on it. It's really just a mix and mash of recipes with appetizers and main meals so you have a rabbit recipe to meet all of your needs. And the Home Cooked Rabbit Cookbook is now for sale on Amazon and my website. I will leave the information linked down in the description box below. Once you have all of your meat and your broth inside of your jars, Take just a little bit of vinegar and a paper towel and go around and wipe the rims of each of your jars before putting your lids on. This will get any fat residue off the sides of your jars and give you a better chance at having all of your jars seal. Okay, so five jars of rabbit and one can of broth are going in the canner. I'm gonna dump a little bit of vinegar, probably a couple of tablespoons full of vinegar into the water in my canner. This helps keep the greasy scum from forming on the outside of your jars and helps your jars looking clear. Well, it got dark on us last night, so I had to finish up the canning process by myself. This seems to happen every time I try to can something on YouTube. I always start in the evening because it's very hot where we live. So I have to go into the night with canning, which I don't mind, but it makes it difficult to film. So I went ahead and when it was done with its 90 minutes in the canner, I just turned the gas off, let everything cool down, come down to pressure, and often if it's too late, I just leave everything where it is and get to it the next morning. So the next morning, I bring the canner inside. I take my jars out of the canner one by one, wipe them down with vinegar, remove the outer rings, and test my seals. I want to make sure that I can pick that can up by the seal and nothing comes loose. If anything comes loose, it either needs to go immediately into the fridge if I've checked the canner right after it finished, or if it's set overnight like these have, that broth will then have to go to the chickens. The chickens love it. It's a little boost to their diet, which I don't mind at all. But I hate that, you know, I canned something and it didn't sell properly. It's better to know right away than to know when I make my family sick, though. So, I just go through each of my jars, wiping them down, removing the rings, and testing the seals. Thankfully, all of my rabbit meat canned up perfectly and is now shelf-stable. I am excited to have more rabbit on our shelves. This does not last long because I always grab it for a quick dinner. It is delicious and I know it is one meat that Declan will always eat because he loves rabbit. I hope you enjoyed being in my kitchen with me and seeing how I pressure can rabbit. Don't forget, Home Cooked Rabbit is now for sale on my website and on Amazon. It comes in ebook form and paperback form on both locations. I'm so excited to be able to bring this cookbook to y'all so we can each enjoy rabbit meat and different recipes to produce it. There are several recipes in the cookbook that you can use canned rabbit for, so this is perfect to go along with the cookbook. That's all I have for you today, friends. So until next time, bye. We'll see you later.